Google Scholar is a resource that many people like to use, mainly because it resembles Google. Google is something we all use on a daily basis to answer a myriad of questions. The difference between Google and Google Scholar is that Google searches the web or web pages for information. Google Scholar is a lot more focused. What it searches is the scholarly literature and so though many people will turn to it when doing academic research. Google Scholar is a valuable resource but there are some things you need to keep in mind. One is when it returns results to you from doing a search it does so on a combination of relevancy, recency, and citation count, meaning that the most recent article that may be relevant to you doesn't necessarily show up towards the top of the list, and you need to be aware of that when you're doing a search in Google Scholar. Another uh, drawback or thing to think about is that it only searches for the term or phrase typed into the search. Therefore, it's not going to extrapolate your search out from pressure ulcer to bed sore. It just searches for the term that you type into the box. This is not uncommon as it does happen in other databases but is something that you need to keep in mind. A third thing to think about or a drawback that you might uh, find with Google Scholar is that you're limited in how you can filter or uh, your search. You have less control over the search results and therefore can never be fully sure that you've done a complete search in Google Scholar. You can see what I mean about drawbacks when it comes to Google Scholar when I search for something such as pressure ulcer. When I search for pressure ulcer what you're going to see very quickly is that I get a set of results but when it comes to these results the most recent article I get at the top is 1997 and mainly it shows up because not only does it have the term that I'm looking for but it's also been cited 304 times. It is not until you get several pages in that you'll even get to an article that could be um, deemed as within the last five years. Now as I pointed out uh, in talking about things that you ought to be aware of when it comes to Google Scholar, there's only one real way for you to, to limit your search and that is by date range. So if you want to get to those more recent articles, you can come over here and click on the, uh, the date range. If you want to make it custom, you can click here. Or if you want it, say, within the last two years, you can click here. But even when you do that, you're never going to be fully um, aware of the most recent articles because of the algorithm that the database uses of relevancy, recency, and citation count. A nice thing about Google Scholar, though, is while it has these drawbacks, it does enable you to search for specific articles and see how many times it's been cited. As you can see from the highlighted uh, piece of the picture of these two citations pulled from Google Scholar, you can not only see how many times it's been cited, but if you click on those numbers where it says cited by, you'll be able to see which articles cited them. Lastly, keep in mind that when it comes to using Google Scholar, while free full text is not necessarily available with every article in it, you can go through and set it up to link to the VCU libraries by adjusting your settings so that you can get the full text articles for what you find in Google Scholar. I have provided links to the instructions to do this on the uh, PowerPoint for this presentation.